Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble, and I'm Alex, and we're here until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, out to the west coast of the United States, we go to the somewhat infected California, San Francisco, <laughs> California to be specific, and the infected Larry Bubbles Brown. Well, you're not infected, right? Not yet. No, I keep trying to get the COVID, but it uh, bounces off me. Get, I, I was telling um, uh, uh, Pearl this and Kravitz this uh, a couple of weeks ago. I, guess who I talked to? Uh, okay. Oh, this is there's no prize for the answer to this one. Okay. I uh, I talked to Will Durst. Oh, great! I, in fact, by video, something you wouldn't know about, but. Uh, I well, could... someone just told me they visited him. He, they said he sounded very sharp and it's time oh, to do a little rehab. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, he's, he's, oh, that's great. he's got a problem. He says his right leg won't move, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and his hand, one of his hands is still impinged, and but they're doing physical therapy. And uh, I talked with him, and he was lucid and fun and funny. Oh, and great. Hu- and humorous about his predicament, you know. All that's the, things, the best news I've heard in months. Yeah, that's you know I I didn't know I I had uh, Debbie told me how to get a hold of him. Okay, and I'd tell you too, but you don't have an iPhone, so you can't do it, right? I can't no. Uh, but I I called his email address via Facebook and I talked to him, and uh, he 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 you know he looks a little pale and he's been lying he's in bed, right? But, He's been in a hospital for a year, over a year. Yeah, but his his uh, uh, he he's just he he's better than I am at, at giving out with a coherent sentence these days. Uh, wow. Listen to me now; I'm stumbling around. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he he was just he was lucid and he was funny and uh, I told him I call him maybe a couple, maybe a couple of times a week just to you know keep him company for an hour, half hour or so. Uh, but it was good to it was good to see him after all this time. Yeah. That'll be so great if he can come back and perform. Yeah. Who who went out to see him at the hospital? Uh, Michael Bossy. I don't know if you know him. Or yeah, not, yeah, I know just, who Michael is. It, yeah, it, he it, said that he said he sounded really sharp and lucid. He's Debbie's partner, right? In comedy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, he, uh, uh, I, I'm surprised he got to see him because I don't think I don't know. Can Debbie see him? I'm wondering. I forgot what she said. She can go out there, but not. They have to talk through a glass the window. It's like uh, Midnight Express. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm because I'm talking to her on uh, on Saturday. I'm doing a, a video thing with her. You wouldn't know about the video thing. You know? <laughs> I've got you know. If you only had something like an iPhone or whatever, you know, this thing Zoom is so easy to use. A complete moron could call me. <laughs> Believe me, I'd screw it up. No, you wouldn't. You absolutely wouldn't. Uh, but uh, you know, I've got a phone here with your name on it. You know, oh, you're you're about one of four people. Mm-hmm. So why don't so you? So ta- Durst had, uh, you know, he that stroke he had was huge. And apparently, there a, apparently, there was a nurse there. Mm-hmm. He fell off his chair, and she could tell by the way he was reacting. She goes, "That guy's having a stroke," so they got him to the right hospital right away. So I think that actually saved his life. Wow, uh, because uh, he he fell to the ground, didn't he? Something like that. He said, "I'm." Fe-, he said, "Man, I feel really tired to try to sit down and miss the chair." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there was yeah there was a do- literally they said, "Is there a doctor in the house?" And there was. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Yeah. And the doctor said, get this guy to a hospital right now. He's had a stroke. Yeah, a stroke stroke hospital if you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but uh, he's been in there a year. Part of the reason why he's had so much trouble in rehabilitation is because COVID hit and everything stopped. Right. You know, 
So any any advance he could have made in in PT at that time was, you know, um, and and that's been the problem with COVID all the way around. You know, it isn't just that people get COVID; they also get cancer. Okay, and now you've got hospitals going. We're too busy taking care of the eighty thousand patients who didn't wear a mask. You know, to take care <laughs> of you. Uh, and, uh, so that's a, that's a, that's a real problem. Uh, you, you know, I had that thing for prostate cancer, right? I had the radiation and then I had the seeds implanted. I had the seeds implanted a week before the COVID crisis hit the hospitals here in New York. Really? Wow. And, I forgot and, that. And if I hadn't got, and I got it a week later because there was some kind of problem when I first went in having the equipment to do it with. Okay. So I had to go a week later. If I had gone one more week later, I would have never gotten it. I'd be still sitting here with prostate cancer. Jesus. Instead, right now, I have no sign of it at all. So So it worked. Well, it worked, but, you know, they do the five-year thing. You know, if after five years, blah, 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 you know. Uh, But for the time being, yeah, it worked. You know, I had a, uh, what was it? They have the, they, they, if you have a high PSA level, they think you might have prostate cancer. So then you go through all the tests, and I went through all the tests, and I had prostate cancer. Not huge prostate cancer, but prostate cancer. So they decide to do this. They have this PSA test that they give you, and my PSA was like it had gone up to a 6, but then it went down to like a 4.3 or something like that. Anything under 4 is okay. Uh, better to, if it's around a 2.5. Okay, don't let me bore you with numbers here. Let me get to the point. The point was they did the radiation on me and they did the seeds. And the, uh, I uh, was at uh, what, Mount Sinai. They did a six-month check on me or three-month check on me. They had to do it late because of COVID. And uh, I came out with a point zero two wow. PSA. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like you're clear. And my doctor, I just went to him for a checkup, and they did a PSA on me. It at least has it there, and it says 0.0. Jesus. So, you know, I mean, apparently it worked. Now, whether it stays that way or not, who knows? But And this was done without uh, too much pain or discomfort? Well, I mean, anytime you go into a hospital, this was, a, this was you know, he's going into my... Uh, he cuts into he cuts goes through your perineum into your oh, prostate, gosh. and then he starts planting these seeds, right? These radioactive seeds. Uh, they couldn't put me out because of my age. They said we don't want to put you out. We want to give you a spinal. And I went, oh, that's got to be pleasant. Oh my God, well, I it, dread it did, those. It, it didn't hurt a bit. Didn't hurt a bit. Uh, they numbed the area a little bit. They put the spinal taps in there. Uh, and, uh, there, you know, uh, spinal tap, I could make a joke about the movie spinal tap here, <laughs> insert joke about movie spinal tap here. And then they put the spinal tap in me and, uh, everything below my waist, just, it's like, it doesn't exist anymore. Right. And then he goes in there and does whatever he does. Uh, and they gave me a heavy dose of like Valium or something. So I'm in kind of la la land, but I'm not out. Okay. So I can hear everything that's going on in the operating room. And, and you know, you think when they're the sutures, scalpel, give me the clamp, don't it, um, uh uh-huh. No, it's like, so what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to the beach or something like that. And yeah, that's what and, I heard. They just have, like, normal and, conversation and, and, while and doing he, this. And, and he's doing the thing, you know, and he's going, yeah, so how's your wife? How's the kids? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going, I really would like to be put out for this. I feel like I'm I'm joining a party I wasn't invited to, you know. <laughs> there was never anything like, uh, will you look at the size of this guy's balls? You know, nothing <laughs> like that. <laughs> but anyway, so he went in there, they did it, and then I spent, it took me about three hours before the spinal went away. But for three hours, I knew what it was like to be a paraplegic. You know, because you just, you want to move your legs, but you can't move them. So, yeah, that was uh, one of my horrible fears is the spinal injury. Spinal injury? 
Yeah, I would hate to be paralyzed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But so you know what it feel or doesn't feel like. So you couldn't move anything and doesn't feel well, anything. Well, it's weird. I mean, you just don't feel anything. There's and nothing. how long does that wear off? Well, it took about three hours before it wore Holy off. Holy shit! Me. Yeah, Jesus. yeah. And they wouldn't let me leave until I peed, and I got really mad and testy with the nurse because she kept saying, "Drink water, drink water, drink water," and I'm drinking while I'm gurgling it down like it's and. And then all of a sudden, my my belly's filling up with water, and I feel like I gotta pee, but I, you know, I I I can't really get up to go pee. So finally, she let me go pee, and I went and I peed, and I, if you do it enough in a bottle, I said, "Is that enough?" She says, "Yeah." I said, "Okay, where are my clothes? I'm getting out of here," because <laughs> I I was tired of being there. Because other people who had been put out. You know, as soon as they peed, they got to go. But I had to wait for the rest of my body to wake up. Oh, I've had friends that got a spinal tap, and they took, like, they kept missing, and it sounded like it was incredibly painful. You got lucky. No, it's, it, it, well, I mean, I was in a, I, I was in a professional hospital. <laughs> it does a lot of this. This wasn't Kaiser. <laughs> no, this was Mount Sinai, and the guy was great. He was terrific. I mean, but I didn't. I thought I was going to feel great pain when they did the spinal, and I didn't. I felt uh, like a little, like you know, a needle prick kind of thing. Uh, but that's all I. That's all I felt, you know. And then I didn't feel anything. And then he gave me the juice. He gave me some Valium, a uh, strong dose of it. And I'm kind of in La La Land, but I'm not out, you know. And then I can hear these conversations going on. And uh, so that was my, but but so, if I... So you didn't feel like that you were there a long time, because that Valium will make you... Oh, yeah, no, it went by, you know. Yeah. It only took 45 minutes, I think, for him to do it anyway. I, and $50,000. Uh, <laughs> That's a thousand a minute. Yeah. So, uh, but I, but I, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I really, um, if I had waited a week, I wouldn't have been able to get it till sometime about now, you know. And yeah, so many people uh, miss getting necessary surgery because of this COVID. God, I had a woman Nick. We had a woman next door, next door neighbor who died, uh, and she was really ill, and they called an ambulance, and they couldn't get one, and a, and she died at home. Because Holy she couldn't shit. get an ambulance. That was the very beginning of the whole COVID crisis, where, you know, outside we would hear sirens all night long. Because you know, the death rate was up to, what, 700, 800 a day, something like that? Yeah, it looked like it was the start of the end there. Yeah, we, New York, were, anyway. we had a terrible problem. But uh, you, your problem in California is not that good. You know, you got, you still got it. You know, yeah, we started out well. Now it's spread. Now it's uh, I don't know. Now some places are starting to open up a little. Mm -hmm. They're not opening up Disneyland, and that's getting to be a big fight. Really? Yeah. I thought it was the happiest place on earth. Well, uh, not <laughs> not when they're not making money. <laughs> they're the crankiest place on yeah. earth. Well, we're not making money for Uncle Walt anymore. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people are leaving California. Joe Rogan, yeah, make hundred million dollars. Wow! And uh, Rob Schneider just moved. Where did Rob move to? Yeah, Scottsdale. Oh, okay. All right. So why are they all leaving? Uh, I guess L.A. is turning into a total pit. And if you got kids, you definitely don't want to raise them there. So. Really? So. That, and I think uh, it's also. Uh, the taxes are really, you go to a state that has no state income tax, you're, you're making a lot of money, you'll save a lot. Yeah, yeah. R let's see, Rogan got what, how much? $100 million from uh, Spotify. Oh, boy, did they overpay for that. Yeah. Well, he's really, he's got, uh, what has he got, 10 million viewers? Uh, maybe, you know, Um I hear it's not as good now since he went over to Spotify. <laughs> plus, I think, really? Yeah, plus I think you have to pay for him now, if I'm not mistaken, you know. Well, the thing he had before, it had such a, had the worst, it looked like it had a camera from 1940. It just like they didn't, you couldn't see the other guests. It just, 
that kind of money, you have a little production value, I think. Yeah, well, they're, they're, uh, Spotify has approached me to buy uh, GabNet uh, for, I think it was $50. So, <laughs> you know, and I'm considering it. <laughs> it's good. You're talking it over with the lawyers. I'm talking it over with the lawyers. They're working on the final papers on it. And uh, <laughs> before you know it, I'm 50 bucks richer. You know. Anyway, listen, I got to go. You got to go. I mean, we've run out of time. That's what it is. I, I love talking with you. you just we're, make... we're rapidly running out of time, we if just, you know what I mean. We so. just have a conversation. You know, and that's wonderful. And that's what I like. I don't feel I don't feel pressured to tell jokes. I just like talking with you. So yeah, just, yeah. Oh, well, that's what it's all about. I don't yeah. expect my people to be, you know, tap dance for me. That's why your radio show is so good because we'd come in and be funny, but most radio shows you go in and you do your act, and it, the years was more conversational. It was yeah. much. It was really in the flow of the moment. And everything. And you were so asked just better. to use your normal uh, ability at being funny as a person, you know. Yeah. And and also when you were on my show, you probably developed some material too. Yeah, sure. But anyway, time to go. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. You got it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, hi, how are you? Welcome to the fine program. You know, I look down here, I can tell I, we have a waiting room uh, on, the, uh, on the Zoom. And then I uh, see people getting in the waiting room and getting ready to be on the program. Usually Charlie Wallace is there and a Jeff is there and a couple other people ready to go when we start off here. And uh, there's nobody there. There's nobody there right now. So maybe this is the night nobody calls. Is that possible? Is there, is there anything happening out there that I don't know about? Anyway, uh, if you get a chance, give me a call. And if we don't get any calls, then I can call this off early and go to sleep or do something, you know. Anyway, uh, we're uh, we're coming close, coming close. Uh, oh, here, here's Jeff. Here's Jeff Stein. He's coming into the four here. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, let's let's just go over and add him to the uh, the pan. Oh, and here comes Josh Wheeler. Okay, all right. They're all starting to join us now. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Hello, Josh. Hello, Jeffrey. Uh, Dan, uh, this is a Dan, I don't know, but I think it's going to be okay. Let me see here. Um, uh, Dan, hello, Dan, how are you? Is it Dan Zeitlin, is it, Dan? Can you hear me? You're connecting your audio. Dan? Always the new guys cause problems here. Dan, can you hear me? Dan, hello, can you hear me? No, he can't hear me. He said not, uh, it says Dan is connecting to audio. Wait a minute, let me give him a little kick in the butt here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh, no, I just put in the waiting room, stop video. No, I, no, he, he's, can you hear us, Dan? Dan, can you hear us? Okay, Dan. Well, we're not going to spend the rest of our lives uh, dealing with that. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Turn on your mic. <laughs> we'll get this technically going. You can now. There you go. How are you? How are you doing up there in Connecticut? Good. Good. Yeah, how's your infection rate in Connecticut? Well, you know, my son's got uh, three kids who work with them were sick. Mm -hmm. So, but nobody more. Wow. So it's kind of yeah. calming down a little bit. A little bit. Here comes, uh, here comes Brian. He is known today as 9,000, 90,000 <clears throat> plus cases uh, there. Okay. <laughs> here comes Charlie Wallace. Charlie's a little late to the party tonight. Uh, uh, he's having issues logging on, he said. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Well, he's here yeah, now. There he is. There he is. Yeah. Hello there, Charlie. How are you? Uh, how's it going? Um, Charlie, congratulations on Texas. You have had more people yeah. now 
early vote than actually voted in the last presidential election. Wow. Mm. Yep. Yep. So what, what do you think that means? I mean, who are the people who are pre-voting, do you figure? I think Texas, a lot of people had to vote early before they died. Well, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was why. The way I calculated it. Yeah, yeah. Vote now, so you. Uh, you That's you, what I've told myself. I said. Yeah. Now it's okay to die. My question is: My question is, if you early vote, and then you die, is your vote counted? Of course. Well, I mean, yes. If 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 you die before election day, you can't vote. How would they know? <laughs> I don't know. I'm vote. just I'm just asking. Uh, you know, I'm asking these last minute questions because we have precious little else to talk about. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, it, it's just gotten ridiculous. Uh, uh, I watch all these. Uh, I think it's like I watch MSNBC, and it's like they're spending the whole day not knowing what to talk about. You know, so, oh, thank God, Joe Biden's giving a speech. Let's run the whole thing, right? You know, um, or Trump says something and they can suddenly turn it into an hour of broadcasting. Yeah, it's they've been talking about the whole Biden, uh, the other channels not not covering the Biden stuff. They talked about that for a half hour when I was at the gym yesterday. Well, you know what happened? What happened today? Uh, what was it? Uh, Donald Trump's son, uh, a stupid. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, uh, Donald, Donald Trump Jr. Yeah. was on Fox, oh, I Donald think. Trump Jr. Yeah, on Fox, and he said, and I quote, um, "Well, let's face it. There haven't been that many deaths lately, huh? Under control. How many were there today? Over nine hundred. Over nine hundred. Yeah." We haven't had any deaths lately. I don't understand that. Over a thousand yesterday. Well, let's see if we can get Dan in here. Hello, Dan. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Dan? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. There now we are. got you. Say, I had to reinstall a Zoom client. Something happened to it, and it was just oh, really? very looping me around. We, we had your we had your picture and everything, but you couldn't well, hear that us. Was, or that was my cell phone. Just to see if it, yeah. if it was a client or not. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to our fine program. I noticed Thank you. that on Facebook you asked me to tell you where to go with this. You can always go over to gabnet.net, and on the right-hand side it says, during the program, Zoom us by clicking here, and you can just click on there, gabnet.net. Okay. Uh, and uh, Or I think now that you have it, don't don't you guys somehow have this in a, in a file somewhere now where it... Uh, <laughs> Click down menu. It says, do you want to join a, uh, a meeting? You can click down there. It has all your meetings there, your last ones. Oh, I see. Okay. So yeah, now that you've called, you have no reason mm -hmm. not to call, you know. So how, where are you, uh, where are you uh, Dan? I'm in Annapolis, Maryland. Annapolis, Maryland. Well, I don't think we've ever had anybody call us from Maryland before. Well, I don't know if Dan on the map. ever called in, but I know she's, she's friendly with Marjorie. Uh, who? With your wife. Uh, who's friendly with my wife? My wife, Louise. <laughs> Louise. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll mention it to uh, my wife, uh, Marjorie, who has not been feeling well since the bad, since the the wet weather has hit. Every every ache and pain that she has, like in her back and stuff, has been going crazy. Yeah. So I can't complain about my ills to her. So, uh, yeah. It's, mm. In fact, I can't complain about my ills to anybody. Because I went to my doctor and I got my yearly checkup and I'm there's nothing wrong with me, okay. Uh, so I'm starting to figure out. Well, maybe I should get the hernia done. Then I can complain about that. I'm going to have the eyes done. I can complain <laughs> about that. You know, it's it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, um, oh here comes um, who is this? I don't know. This has got to this has got to be John Larkin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. shingles, right? Hey. Yeah. yeah. I had shingles before. That's not a not uh, fun. I I no. got I, you know how I got shing I got shingles on my face. I got oh, right wow. right, I got in, right in the side head. side of my eye. Yeah. And you can go blind, right? Yeah, and I was in upstate uh, California on a vacation, and um, I had to go to this doctor that my friend who I was staying with had worked for. 
and he he just basically what he did for a living was marijuana references. You know those those uh, marijuana mm-hmm. uh, notes from a doctor that you have to have marijuana. But he was also a doctor, so he said, oh, you got shingles. And I'm going, wait a minute, didn't you have to have, what was it? Um, uh, chicken pox. Chicken, chicken pox. pox in order to get shingles? And he goes, yeah. And I said, I never had chicken pox. And he says, you may not have thought you had chicken pox, but you may have had chicken pox. You may have been yeah. exposed to it, had a light case, you know, and then it made you immune to chicken pox. But then uh, years later, it comes up as uh, as this because I had a girlfriend that I was you know spending most of my time with and very intimate with, and she got chicken pox at twenty three, okay, and she says, "Well, you're going to get it for sure." And here I am. I'm like you know I'm in my forties. Well, twenty three, forty. Don't make a big deal out of it anyway. <laughs> and and I uh, and she said, uh, "You're going to get it," and I'm thinking. Well, you know, if I get it, I could go sterile, right, from chicken pox, right? I didn't get it. And so she says, you probably, had you, you probably had it. So years later, I get the shingles. I get it on my face here. And he said to me, he says, here, go, go down to the pharmacy, get these pills, take them, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. He said, glad you came to me today. If you'd waited a couple of more days, you might have gone blind. Yeah, yeah, my friend almost yeah. Yeah, my friend had it on his scalp, and it was coming down. And luckily, it stopped in time. Same thing. Yeah, it just, it, <clears throat> I had it. I, I had it on a Friday. I started getting this rash, and I thought it was because my back was sore. And I put a heating pad for a while, and then finally Monday I came in. So this half, this half, all the way to the back, just wrapped around right here. This section was yeah. all. I mean, geez, you, you couldn't even breathe. It would hurt so bad. Well, when I first heard about shingles. I thought it was something you got in your ass. I mean, doesn't that sound like something you get in your ass? Yeah. It doesn't sound like something you get on your face or on your side or whatever. So I just went shingles. Oh, boy, yeah, is that a thing you get in your... No, it's not. And uh, I, so now I go every year, in, or when I can, I think I only have to do it every couple of years and get my shingle shot. Yeah. A single yeah. shingle shot. Well, you know, they have a new two-stage one now. Do they really? <laughs> Yeah, I, my doctor urged me to take it. He said the old one was, I don't know, 75% effective or something. And this is in the 90s somewhere. Oh, really? And you take two shots, I think, a couple of weeks apart. Oh, so it's not a single shingle shot anymore. It's a double oh, single shingle shot. Oh, that's what prompted me to say it's a double shingle shot. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have it in his office, but all the drugstores have it. Yeah, well, I mean, they don't say, uh, um, I, I, I guess they went to the double because people couldn't say single shingle shot. Well, this is a different one. The other one, I think, was a live virus. This one's dead. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So it's, I, it's a new technology. <laughs> oh, gee, yeah. Well, I wish we'd get that for COVID. Uh, we can sure use it, you know. Yes, John Larkin from San Francisco, San Francisco California. Oh, remember when I was telling you I, I, felt, I felt like I had these needles sticking in my oh, yeah. head? Yeah. That's what it was. I, I, was, I was in so, so much pain last night. I couldn't sleep. I called uh, Kaiser this morning, and I told him what it was. I, th- I thought it was COVID because I had such a, you know, bad headache and I couldn't sleep. And when I told him about the needles in the back of my head, they said it's, it's shingles. Come in right now. Wow. So I went down there and they gave me a bunch of drugs and uh, a bunch of stuff to put it on my on my head. But it sucks because. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! This is what you had last night, and here for some night. reason, independent of that, we're talking about shingles, and you had it this morning. No, no, I had it last night. But well, last I didn't night, know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I when I told you, I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was COVID, you know, or something. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, it was COVID with a dash of shingles. Yeah, yeah. yeah touch of the shingles. <laughs> touch, touch of the, the, touch of the, the shingles. COVID, COVID shingles mixer. Yeah, yeah. So, it but, hurt, but hurts it's so bad. You're, you, you know, you got this headache. But you can't lay your head down because the pin started. Yeah, yeah, you drive no. you fucking nuts. Well, I put a this, shirt on. I just remember this thing was very painful. It was very yeah. painful. And he said to me, he says, you're lucky you got to me because a couple more days you could have lost your eyes, eyesight. Man. Mm-hmm. So, it's on my head uh, back here. It's a fucking bitch. I remember when, Let- remember when Letterman got it and he was off the air for three weeks, mainly because he was vain, because he didn't want anybody to see the shingles. Uh, yeah, it took three weeks for it to go away. I mean, sometimes it takes a while to go away, but 
And he gave me some pills, and he also gave me some nice other pills, and then he took me back to his place, and we smoked some of that good Mendocino weed, you know, and uh, I didn't care whether I had shingles or not. So, Josh, it's our long national nightmare is almost over, right? Well, you hope so. <laughs> It's got you know. It's, well, we it's, got at least two, three more months. I no. Too no. early to do. I'm at the point. I, I don't know about the rest of you. I'm just so tired of this, so exhausted yeah. with it. You know. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people here on the who normally call the show don't even call because they're sick and tired of talking about it. You know. Well, it's it's important. Yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, I, I don't know, but. Uh, it's going to get crazy uh, after the election. Well, Dan, you're not a spring yeah. chicken. Uh, but then again, I can call, say that because neither am I. Uh, have you ever seen a more important uh, presidential election in your lifetime? No, I mean, I wasn't around in 1939 in Germany, but that's the closest thing I can remember. Yeah, yeah. I, I was around 1939 here. That was the year I was born. Yeah. But I was, uh, I was uh, born a few years later and, and yeah. sweated the war out in uh, yeah. what was then Palestine. Right. But but did you did you ever never have you ever seen a presidential race that is this important? You know, it's, it's important. And not only that, but the aftermath is going to be hell to deal with. First is going to be all the shenanigans that goes on about how the election was invalid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if we get through that, in spite of the fact that he's bought himself a few seats on the Supreme mm -hmm. Court, if we get through that, then we've got the mess to clean up, and I won't be alive when that gets cleaned up. Well, if he goes to the Supreme Court with this thing, you know, we think, oh, he's going to get away with it then. And the fact is that that's not true, you know, that, that the Supreme Court may see that it's immutable that he lost the race and they're not going to sit there and suddenly say, because you gave me a job, I'm going to make, make sure you have one. You know, I think it's, there's two things, Alex. One is that there'll be a list of, of particulars as, as trivial as they may be that they'll have to wade through yeah. some argument. But yeah. I'm hoping that the justices that would normally be inclined to do that kind of foolishness will rise above that and will understand how important this is. And sometimes people that aren't so great act great in situations where, where there's a lot of pressure on them and they realize that this is very important. Well, I think, I think also that they're going to, the Supreme Court is going to care about the reputation of the Supreme Court as well. And that they don't make some kind of a decision, which is, you know, I mean, he can go to them with anything and say, oh, uh, the mail-in votes, blah, blah, blah. And they're just going to go, look, you lost so lot, so big or whatever. We just don't even want to take this, you know, just just take your medicine and go home. You know? um, but yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, everyone is under this assumption that we're all going to vote and then sit around and wait for a few weeks for it to be decided by the Supreme Court, but we have no idea if it will even be situations that would arise from that anyway. And secondly, they they don't have to hear any case that they don't they don't want to. Well, he and said even if there were, even if there were some particular cases that were on track for that. You know, it's yeah. not often that they completely disagree with all the lower courts in all cases. So I think that's a long way off. I mean, I think you're see, right, Josh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, I, I, but my, you know, I mean, my, my point is here I, to begin with, um, I hope it's enough of a loss for him. I'm assuming he's going to lose. Yeah. Okay. I know that's yeah. knock on wood, but I'm assuming yeah. that he, he's going to, he's going to lose. But I, mean, I, I guess I, I want to no, see him, no. I want to see him lose big, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I know Charlie is going to say something here. So I was just going to say, like, I kind of look at the Supreme Court thing like a manager in the fifth inning worrying about what he's going to do in extra innings. You right. Know what I mean, yeah. When there's still four innings of regular game play. I mean, well, but it's yeah, a valid but, but, thing but, to but, concern yourself with, but. Yeah. Try to win a game in regulation first. I want to go to Charlie next, but before I go to you, Charlie, I just want to say 
that he's already set up the scenario because he has said, the only way I'm going to lose if this is if this is fixed. That's, he said that. So, you know, he's setting it up. Yes, Charlie. Charlie. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be close. Yeah, no. I don't I, think it's going to be close. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I can hear you, Charlie. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I, okay, I've said, I've got this message. I think uh, there's, the, the Biden's going to win so many states, it's not even going to be close. I think Biden's going to win Texas. I, and that'll I, do it. You know, with that, with those uh, those votes, the mm -hmm. amount of votes that have been cast in Texas, which is more than were cast in the last presidential election, uh, I think there are a lot of people doing this in advance, and yeah. they are not Trump people; they're Republican. They're uh, they're Democrats. Well, yeah, I mean, I was going to say that earlier when you asked about that. I, I mean, the Texas situation is. You know, it's not really the only place where the numbers are similar mm -hmm. to that. And it seems like the early voting is, if I understand it right, is almost already kind of outpacing. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, not outpacing, but similar to what we see for normal type mm -hmm. of turnout mm -hmm. for presidential elections, which means it looks like we're on pace for like historic turnout, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in this yeah. election. And I don't, this is not from polling or evidence or anything. This is just like my observation it just seems to me like the that would be bad for him because a lot of people voting that don't usually vote or things like that seems to me like they would tend to trend more toward a biden to get rid of him rather than keep him because the people that are excited about him or love him i think those people came out of the shadows last election and are already mm -hmm. in that figure they're already counted so all, if we have record turnout, all of these new people that either don't vote often or are voting for the first time, it just seems to me like they are people who probably did not vote for him the last time. I'm not saying there's not yeah. going to be some. There's always some. Yeah, but, but I, it, what, what, it just what, seems to me like overwhelmingly that margin should theoretically trend toward the Democratic Party or Biden. By this surge, by this record surge in early voting. One would think that the people who are doing the early voting aren't the Trump people because they're not enthusiastic. Right. They're just, they just want their guy to win. The, the people yeah, who mean, want him out of there like are that. enthusiastic, you know? Yeah, the, the, but, but I, I just don't know that he has any, like, new voters. You know what I mean? Like, the people yeah. that love him, mm -hmm. it just seems like fell in love with him in 2015 mm -hmm. and— they were accounted for in the last election, and they're still there. Yeah, uh, the ones that didn't leave him. Ray Renati. So I think he's going to have ones that left him, mm -hmm. and then he's going to have people who don't usually vote or are new voters trending toward Biden. And mm -hmm. it it just seems like maybe the polling is going to be almost as wrong as it was last time, but in the opposite direction. Yeah. Um, does, does that make some yeah, sense? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think so. You think it's going to be close? Ray, the polling and all that, but yeah. it's instead of Biden winning by eight points, maybe he's going to win by 15. Ray, did you uh, uh, vote early? I did. I voted yesterday. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I felt weird dropping it in there. I, I was worried it wasn't going to get picked up. Uh, how would you feel about getting your vote in for Trump? Did that... Uh... Felt great. <laughs> Felt great. I, I, walked out of, uh, I walked out of our polling place guy. the other day and looked at Marjorie and said, well, you know what I did at the last minute? I voted for Trump. And she gave me a look you wouldn't believe, you know. You know, I was so, I was I had it in my mind so strong. Don't I don't vote for Trump. Don't vote for Trump. And I was thinking, I bet there's a lot of people who accidentally they got Trump on the mind. They accidentally circled the Trump thing, and then they realized later, I fucking voted for Trump. What do you? What, what the suicide what, rate's going to be up a little bit. What happens, what happens <laughs> if you vote for Trump, but for vice president you vote for Kamala? Because you can do that. You can't in Texas. You can't in Texas. Here you could. Here you could. There was you had to fill in. You know, it's like it's like an old school test you used to get, like the SATs. Fill in the the thing. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Like that. There we go. Oh, sorry. I don't want to cover who I'm voting for. Sorry. That's how mine looked. Yeah. 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 
Hey, yeah, you know, like as soon as I dropped my ballot in the box, I got on the in the car, and the radio goes, "Did you did you hear this yesterday?" Um, uh, oh, I forgot your name. <laughs> Oh, Brian? The guy who's from Los Gatos. It's Brian. Oh, <laughs> Brian. Brian, yeah. They, they said that in uh, Concord, they lost dozens of ballots in one of those boxes. Oh, yeah. True. And I just dropped it off. Like, fuck. Well, it's funny. Our drop-off box was a garbage can. I don't understand that. Okay. <laughs> you, know. you know, I got a notice in the mail. That's the third time I've done that joke, and I'm going to keep doing it until we finally don't have an election going anymore, because the only good joke about the election I've got... I, I got an email that said that my vote had been counted. Ah, oh. you see, um, a Robert, who again is not here tonight. I hope Robert's okay. Um, Robert uh, said that he actually did his by mail. And then about five days later, he could go online, put his name in, and it would say, hey, we got your vote. It's been counted. Right. Yeah, you can do yeah. that in it, California. It too. happens in California, yeah. too. Yeah. How about in Texas, My wife Charlie? Did it. Yesterday, Charlie, same thing. In Texas, they won't tell you, but you can look it up. I went online and looked it up, and it said I got your vote. And then a few days later, it said your vote is valid. And then this week, I got a vote. They already started counting the mail-in votes, votes in Texas. Mm -hmm. I got. I, I can look it up and see it and oh, say oh, your oh. vote has been counted. You just use that on your iPhone, for instance, and it'll then go to the site and tell you whether your uh, your vote yeah. has been counted. If it got received, I don't think they don't tell you if it got counted. They tell you if it got received by the right registrar there. Put voter. It back. said it was counted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Put that up again so I can scan it with the QR code. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got one when I mailed mine in, and I got one that said I checked and and it showed it they received it, and mm -hmm. then. A few days ago, actually yesterday, I got an uh, an email, a personal email that said your vote's been counted. And Louise dropped hers in the local drop-off box. Mm -hmm. She had a mail-in ballot, but she dropped hers off. I sent mine in. And she similarly got a notice, your ballot's been counted. So, yeah. And how, how, how did the polls look? Were there a lot of people there waiting? Or, or did they have polls there or, or just, the mail, just the box? For the, no, there was just a drop box, and oh, okay. she, she said there was hardly, you know, there was nobody around. Yeah. Um, now, I have a friend in uh, in Maryland, uh, in Baltimore County, north of here, mm -hmm. and he and his wife both went in person, mm -hmm. and uh, sh he waited almost two hours in the rain. Oh. What? Wife, in the rain? wife waited 45 minutes. People oh. are committed. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing is, we had, uh, what did we have? We had... Um, in fact, he said a guy came around giving away sandwiches, and somebody else had yeah. um, coffee to the people waiting in line. We oh. had, we had, um, uh, we we were in line, waited in line. It took us an hour, which has gotten our our governor a little uh, mad, okay, uh, and a little mad because uh, he says it shouldn't, people shouldn't have to wait that long. That there's there's something wrong with our election board. And, it's got to be changed, and the way in which we get people on that board have got to be changed. But we did it for an hour, and we found it a lot of fun. I mean, they came by. People were passing out water from the polling place, and other people from the neighborhood who had, like, sandwich shops made up sandwiches and were passing out free sure. sandwiches to the crowd. And, you know, by the time we got there, it may have been an hour, but we mm. it went by just like that because we were talking with people in line and... Everybody was, uh, it was, and then after it was all over, I had it yesterday on the video I ran, Marjorie just looked in the camera and went, this was great. I feel so good about having done this. You know, we could have mailed the thing in. Yeah, you mail it, you put it in the post office box if you can find one. Uh, if not, you can wait, maybe wait till the night of the election and just go to your polling place and drop it in a box there. But you don't get that same visceral feeling that you get by actually going in and voting, you know? You should have said you're Alex Bennett. They would have brought you right in the front of the line, right? Oh, yeah, right. No, I used to, I have to say I used to be Alex Bennett. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I'm, I'm taking Adrian over. We'll drop off ours on election day, mm -hmm. drop at a drop box, just to have that good feeling again. Yeah, have that feeling. Yeah, but, you know, you even have a greater feeling if you go and you get the ballot and go into that little yeah. booth and check off the things and put it in the scanner it, yeah. because it's just the process. I mean, by the time you get, we got there, 
Uh, yeah, we could have taken our ballot and just thrown it in the garbage can or whatever the thing was they had there for it. <laughs> but I haven't just... had that feeling since they, they got rid of the mechanical machines. When I used yeah. to pull that lever... That felt really good. Yeah, the, but there was the something about little, they look like toys. I, I'm not. Yeah, I I, I, I remember those things. They were they had you had a thing. You had to close a curtain, and you close right. a curtain by yes. pulling this this rod or whatever, and then you had the, these levers, and you would yeah. push the levers for what you wanted, and then is this uh, anybody here remember this or are we just yeah, the oh, yeah. oldest punch, guy in I the room? I remember reading about it. And, <laughs> I remember it. Yeah, I saw pictures from you the old. And then when you when you find your name, yeah, we, uh, young enough to when, remember. When you pulled the lever to pull back the curtain, it registered the votes, and I guess it did it on a, a, a thing in the back of the. I don't know how it did it, but Charlie, you didn't do that. They didn't have that in Chicago. We had the little punch things when I first started voting there, and then yeah. I moved to Texas, and we never had it here either. I'll tell you, oh. we don't we don't want that the punch. Lottery, things. those punch things. They I had it when I was. I wasn't voting. Start voting. They had the hanging. I wasn't thing. voting. <laughs> remember the punch cards? I remember those, but they were gambling. They were. They were. Yeah, the punch. <laughs> no, that's what we had to do. Make Thank. sure you don't punch a parlay that's card. How I voted yeah. for McGovern. My first time I ever voted. Now, is it? it are McGovern. we? Are we deluding ourselves, that? or am I right in assuming that I don't think there's any way that Trump is going to? Get a second. Oh, no man. way. I'd be careful. Not legitimately. About that. I looked at the electoral minute, college thing today, yeah. and he is so far behind. Yeah, yeah, but let's go to Dan because he says I wouldn't be so sure about that, right? I mean, you know, I'm I'm kind of in agreement with Josh's position that there's a fixed number of Trump voters. They showed themselves before, and the extra voting that you see now are all people that are not Trump people. Because I think the Trump people really is a he hasn't converted anybody to Trumpism. No. I think they've been there. And, and, and maybe a few more of them will vote now instead of getting another tattoo or something. But they're, they're, you know, they're not going to, it, it's not going to be big, big surge in Trump voters. Did you hear, him, did you hear? I would be very careful about predicting what's going to happen. You may, we were very complacent the last time. And, um, you know, there's states like Pennsylvania that carry a, a, a large electoral weight to them, mm -hmm. Florida. Uh, I haven't done the math. I'm sure the pundits have. I can't stand watching the talking heads anymore. Well, but well, um, they say that 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 Biden doesn't need to win Florida. That well, but understand. Trump does. Trump you know, does. He doesn't need to win Florida, and he doesn't need to win Pennsylvania, and he does. You know, if you if you do enough of that, and he loses them all, you lost. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think he's going to. I think he's going to get Florida. I really do. Biden. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think he's going to get an enormous amount of the popular vote, and you can't help but think if that's true, then he's going to carry the majority of the electoral votes as well. Well, I mean, it was that Florida Hillary State. Hillary had a three million majority, and by the way, the polls that last time were only saying that she was going to get two and a half million more in the popular vote. Wasn't enough. So really, really, they were right. Okay, they just weren't going by electoral standards. They didn't check to see where all those three mil, two point five million votes were going to be. Uh, uh, I think they did. They just screwed up. That yeah. All. But anyway, uh, they, I think they're 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 watching themselves this time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I I'm think I just about forty states for Biden. Forty hmm? states. You're saying forty states for Biden. Because I think I think what's happening here is there is just this thing of of the American public really being all jazzed up to get Trump out of there, you know. And and this isn't the fact that they, you know, there are not a lot of people who are voting for uh, for Biden as much as they're voting against Trump, uh, and want to just see him out of there and somebody in there who isn't going to do much damage uh but another four years of trump and forget it you haven't got a united states of america anymore i mean he's done so much damage that it's amazing yeah, you know. it's very dangerous very dangerous and today i don't know if you saw the speech he was giving in which he said uh you know the, the doctors out there are reporting covid cases that don't exist because they get more they get two thousand dollars more 
if somebody dies of COVID on their watch. That has been debunked. Of course it's been course debunked, it's but he said it, it. And his people are going to say, hey, did you hear? I mean, the doctors are faking the play. There's no COVID out there. I'm not wearing the mask. He's horrible. He's horrible. He should be fucking, he should be hung. Well, I mean, who pays him? Who, who, here's, who, yeah, who pays him this extra two thousand dollars? Okay, I, I, the I insurance companies that, that are the all, that are the cheapest people shit. in yeah, the history of the world, be, or the no government shit. that he runs. I mean, which, which fucking one? Yeah, is yeah. It? who who pays him? Yeah, exactly. But I mean, he says yeah. it. He says it. And the trouble is that there is no national committee who watches the elections for truthfulness. Okay. So he can make a statement like, like that because he's running for president. He gets away with it. Other than, other than the FBC, I suppose there's not. Uh, John Larkin. So when the founders, you know, developed this democracy, one of their main things was to protect, to protect us from majoritarian, meaning like they were thinking like a majority could elect some demagogue. So they created these things to protect us, electric. Ele the uh, Electoral College, the Senate, the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but all those things have failed. Mm -hmm. All those things, because now we're being, because a minority put this fucker in place, and so our system failed. We've got to overhaul it, get rid of the Electoral well, College. Well, here's the deal. Here, here's the first thing that, I, that I, I know has to happen. I think there should be a commission who watches all the advertising being done and then vets it for Truthfulness. In other words, I saw an ad that Trump did with Biden saying, if I'm elected president, I'm going to raise your taxes. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. raise taxes. They didn't finish the statement, which said for everybody over $400,000. But they used it in this ad and used it as Trump saying something he didn't really actually say. There should be a commission out there. That, uh, for instance, Biden could go to and complain about this and say, my words are being misused, you know. Uh, uh, and there should be, and this is the other thing that bothers me. I watch ads, and if you watch the ads for senator, for Congress people, and so on, how many of those ads say they're a Republican or a Democrat? They're hiding it. They're hi yeah. They don't, there's nothing in the mm. ad, even in the small print that says yep. he's Democrat or Republican. There's a guy here, Max Rose, who's running in New York State for this, I think for Senate, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was Congress. I can't remember. But one or the other. Uh, yeah, it had to be Congress because uh, it didn't show up on my ballot. But Max Rose, I'm, I, he's, he, was a, he was a Marine, fought in, you know, in Afghanistan or someplace like that. He talks about how he doesn't want to defund the police and so on. So by my description I just gave you of this guy, Republican or Democrat? Republican. Huh? No, Democrat. I would think he's my, Republican. My immediate thought was he's a Republican. Turns out he's a heavy liberal Democrat. Yeah. Now, somewhere in the ad it should say yeah. Max Rose, Democrat. You know, they, they make sure that whoever did the ad says, you know, I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. Well, I mean, it should say, I'm Donald Trump, I'm a Republican, and I approve this message. Well, you know, what's more surprising, Alex, is yeah. that if you look at some of the websites of these people in Congress, mm -hmm. it doesn't say what party they belong to. I find that I found it incredible. I had a hard time finding out, you know, there was somebody in another state and I wanted to see what party they were. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't find it on the website. Finally, I, I think Wikipedia said to me, is a Republican, you know, Congressman. The, all you, the only time you're ever going to find out is if you're watching one of the news networks and they're speaking and underneath it says so-and-so D or R or I or well, whatever. C-SPAN yeah. has a congressional directory that they publish on the, the website. Well, yeah, I mean, you can find out, but the point is they don't advertise it. That's but the, when they're advertising, well, right. I, I think when they're advertising, they should have to say in the ad, Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, well, whatever. If some, of those, some of those ads that are even for candidates, though, if sometimes they don't mention it so that they can pay for the ad with PAC money and not directly be tied to the candidate's campaign, yeah. which is why sometimes... 
I mean, that's how you can distinguish, I guess, a campaign that was paid for with PAC money. Yeah. And a, I'm sorry, a commercial that was paid for that way and, a, and one that was paid for by the candidate's direct campaign because the one that was paid for by the campaign will be accompanied by the message from the candidate saying, I, you know, that they approve it. Mm -hmm. But one that looks like it was done by the campaign that doesn't have that was was paid for by, you know, right. uh, a private pack or some other group. Somebody, Committee for so, somebody just wrote up, wrote here. Um, Matt Crash wrote, uh, not Matt Crash, but re re re, re s check, I guess. Uh, said uh, Nate Silver has Biden. Now, you know, Nate Silver does odds. He, he runs a, a sports bet page as well, you know, with odds on games and so on. <laughs> the odds for Biden winning are now 90 to 10. Yeah. yeah. Sounds right. Yeah, yep. I believe it. You know, that's what you I hear think. Trump canceled his, uh, his victory party at his hotel, so he's just going to stay at the White House. Oh well, he why is he he's saying, probably afraid to leave the White yeah, House? He doesn't, he doesn't want to fucking look like a loser when he loses, you know. Well, he's not going to look like a loser. Although, if you know what I, we should do is hand him, uh, uh, you know, the largest loss in the history of the United States electoral system. All right, the largest loss, so yeah. he can then brag about that. Yeah, you know, well, I lost won. by more won. than anybody. Ever in history, you know, in history. he had to lose all fifty states. <laughs> yeah, but he he would be more apt to say it was the closest election ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. But the truth doesn't mean anything. Oh no, me. he's going to immediately say he set it up. He said if I lose, it's because the it's uh, the fix was in. Yeah, well, that, he's been saying that for a year already. Oh yeah, no, he's been setting. You can tell what he's going to do because he's been setting up the scenario. When he started with the with, when he started with the post office, that was the beginning of yeah. the campaign. And it's a somebody it's, it's, ought to go to jail for that. Well, he ought to go to jail for a lot of things, uh, but again, we have a history of not prosecuting. The, there should presidents. be a bipartisan organization that hears him say something like that and then goes, Not true, retract it. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I mean, it just because a guy's running for president doesn't mean he can lie, it's yeah. not right. I mean, when he I, used I, Fauci in his ad. Yeah. Uh, Fauci was livid about that. I, I forgot who it was here that just a few minutes ago that said that the framers had certain things in mind. And, you know, the, the, the protections that you get with the three branches of government and checks and balances all only works mm -hmm. if people are lawful, if they, mm -hmm. if they follow the rule of law, yeah. and if they're even yeah. moderately of goodwill. I mean, that they have something about the country in mind. They may disagree, yeah. but at least they have something yeah. uh, for the betterment of the country in mind. None of those things is true of this administration, and that's why it's fallen apart. That's right. It's, it's not bulletproof. I mean, forget about the uh, the electrical electrical about the electrical, electrical college. college. <laughs> the electrical college is what they do behind that voting machine. Yeah, yeah. that's something else. Yeah. But it, you know, it's the, the whole system has failed because the rule of law didn't prevail, and right. and the people involved were not remotely of goodwill nor did they have the welfare of the country in mind right and that's that's the worst part of it all yeah so i you know i mean what what are you going to do well, i mean I, I i'm not gonna i guess delve too much into it because it'll take forever and it'll piss everybody off but uh, i mean i as you know i don't i don't agree so much that we have this terribly flawed system that needs to be torn up and torch to the ground and rebuilt from the bottom. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if Charlie is right and Biden wins 40 states Tuesday, are, are we going to say the system is broken or are we going to say the system worked? We didn't get the outcome that you wanted <coughs> last time because the system was broken. And, and then if he wins 40 states Tuesday night, is the system yeah. still broken yeah, or it's is still it fine? I don't think, well, I don't think, the I mean, to me, more, no, more people voted and they voted in a way that was favorable to what you agreed with so more people should vote well i, mean, uh, look, I don't Trump. i don't know that you can blame anyone in philadelphia in 1776 for the fact that your homeboy joe didn't vote last time well no but here's the yeah. thing here's the thing that happened that's uh, all i'm saying you know? and, and that the trump well, they have uh, the, you know trump no, in I, the I, last I mean, election in the last election trump played a better ground game period 
you know, he, yeah. they were going for the electoral college. They weren't going for the popular vote, and they knew that that was the way to go. And by the strategicness of his ground game, uh, won the election. She, yeah, she won the popular vote, but, you know, we've had a couple of times in our lifetime where the popular vote has Gore v. Bush. Uh, was I think, didn't Gore get more votes than Bush did in the popular yeah, yeah. vote? You know? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Uh, do you really think that Trump knew what he was doing? Or it just happened? It happened. I well, I think uh, you had you had guys like, uh, who was his... Uh, Running his campaign, uh, uh, Bannon. Uh, Bannon, I think, was the architect of that whole thing, and I think he knew exactly what he was doing. And that was at a time, I think, when when Trump listened to other people, you know, because he didn't know how to play the game exactly. Now he thinks he knows everything. I I don't think he ever listened to anybody else. I think they. Could, they I mean, Bannon may have had a lot to do with it, mm -hmm. but. I don't think Trump ever listened, and I think that they they were probably as surprised as the rest of us when they yeah. actually won. Do you notice? All, do you yeah. know? Do you notice what Ray Renati has done here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. And I have no tooth either. <laughs> he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got Tony's wallpaper. <laughs> That's your Halloween. Is that your Halloween costume? Where's who? What? Is that your uh, Halloween costume? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the chat Tony. so you'll see this. i grew a mustache too yeah is he on the chat tony would you call yeah. up we want that same background on two of these okay yeah. tony call us we want to, we want to so, see two of them also alex when, when trump won the election last time just like you mm -hmm. I, I think i heard the same way where well you know he's gonna be president now let's just you know stand behind him and hope you know hope that he does the right stuff yeah but here now it's like if he wins we hate it you know, I mean, there's a different degree than how it was back, you know, six, uh, four years well, ago. Well, you see, what he's done is he has been an absent president. He really hasn't been president. You know, he hasn't done the work. He just goes through the motions. Uh, and he, on the other hand, is so egotistical, he won't let anybody else run things. In other words, hey, you know... I don't know anything about the economy, so I bring in somebody who does, and I say, okay, what should we do on this? And then I listen to them. But he thinks he has to make a decision on everything, and that's why, you know, what, 227 million people are dead now? I mean, 1,000 people are dead? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here comes Tony. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here comes Tony. Watch this. This is going to be so cool because he's going to be right next to, uh, yeah, he's going to be right next to, uh, there we go. From yeah. <laughs> Nerf taking my mother's wallpaper. <laughs> next to, but you got, oh, you even got the drapes. I like it. Yeah, yeah no, I brightened it up a little. I'm going to bring over the plates and hang them in the back. You don't have those. Yeah, yeah no, like, but, but that's, a, that's almost the same I exact tried shot. It. I tried it, but mine's That's funny. Really I like good. it. <laughs> yeah. I heard him say call in. I was listening. Yeah. I was laughing when I saw the wallpaper. <laughs> I saw yeah, wait wall. a minute. The, 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 you're trying to do a Brian, but you can't. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a green screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got the same teeth, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, can get you, I can get you a dentist. You want to go to Mark Paper? <laughs> Very good. He's, he comes out of Georgetown, so you don't have to really? worry about him being. Really? Cool. Yeah, so, uh, you're, so you're taking your mother down to vote on, on Tuesday, yeah, I right? Mean, Alex... It's up in the air, and I'll tell you the truth why. My sister said, should we take mommy there? Because does it really matter? We didn't want to talk in front of her, but she's so like, I want to vote. Because I, I don't want to get a man, but I said, say if she's not alive in four years. This might be our last shot. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm no, only joking. Wait, wait. But Alex, would you take her? Because it's going to be a landslide. We're worried, you know? So oh. least... can't, can't you just get a absentee ballot and drop it I forgot. It I forgot to get it. I was hoping she would forget, really. It's going to be your fault. in the box, though, right? Have a wear a mask. blocks away, so I can, I can wheel her in and wheel her out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have her wear like three masks on top. I'll vote at the same time with her, yeah. yeah. Get her out. Get her some air. Wow. If he, if I'm telling you right now, if Trump somehow wins, <laughs> my mother's going to take it bad. There's no question. You what now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, she gets me talking. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that. Uh, put your wallpaper up again now. Put your wallpaper up again, uh, Ray. Put the wallpaper up again. 
And you'll see, folks, that it, it, it's it, exact. Wait a minute. Are you going to do it, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. What do you see? There's a butt on it? him. There's a big booty on him. How yeah, can he move? Yeah, what, what's with the big booty? He's sitting on my, on my head. Where Come the on. hell did Tony go? Wallet, where did his wallpaper go? Fuck. All right, I'm going to have to reload it because I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, would you get that big butt off of there, please? I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. That's the same exact wallpaper. <laughs> that was terrific. That was terrific. Now, if you can have your mother call from the side of the uh, the uh, the uh, video. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna be glad when it's all over. You know, I mean, this is this is this is this is. I, it ceased to be amusing anymore. You know. Uh, yes, oh, I'm Char so sick of it, Charlie. Is, it's exhausting. Uh, you have to remember too. In 2016, Trump was kind of an unknown uh, entity, mm -hmm. and he made promises. He promised he was going to be a, a populist president. He said, he said he would not like his tax cut. It would be a tax cut for the middle class and the rich people wouldn't like it. And it was the exact opposite. 93% of the tax cut went to the rich. What he was also going to clean the swamp. And what has he done? He brought Drain all it. the swamp animals into his administration. Well, I'll tell you, there is going to be, if, if he loses, and uh, we're hoping and praying and everybody say a prayer tonight, you know, and... Uh, uh, be be good and uh, let's get rid of them once and for all. Okay, right. but but mm. if uh, uh, that's the worst, he's actually using the Zoom green screen because it doesn't. It's kind of I don't have my green screen up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I never use that thing. Is because it looks now it looks like you've got a humpback. You know, yeah, it's yeah. my chair. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't Any, have the green screen. Anyway. Up. Uh, uh, it, it's just that, uh, uh, you know, this guy's killed people. I mean, that through his just lack of... And, and as I said last night, it's amazing to me that he didn't do anything about it. All right? Oh, he just disappeared. Look at that. Uh, that he didn't do anything about it. That he... Um, it, it, Ray, just sit down and just show us your normal <laughs> picture and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, is this is just getting a little on the annoying side. Oh, oh, he's going to put. It's better it. than the garden. Hmm. It's better oh, than the garden. Oh, I yeah yeah uh, yeah. It is. It is. I would rather see him futzing with his green screen than seeing. Uh, who was that guy who played the thing? Tiptoe through the tulips. Yeah. Remember that guy? Yeah. Uh, actually, you know something. Just forget it, Ray. Just go back to a picture of you from your camera. Camera. Oh. oh, there we go. That's a little better. Now we can't hear you. When when uh, when Trump started to run mm -hmm. the last election, mm -hmm. uh, I had a chat with uh, with a guy that I knew pretty well, and mm -hmm. he was a friend. And um, I said to him, he was he was an ardent supporter of Trump, and I said to him, look, even forget his politics, forget all the rest of that nonsense. Mm -hmm. The guy's totally unqualified. I mean, there's no way in hell he can run the country. And uh, I said, it's going to be a disaster, even if he, even if, if none of his politics mattered. Okay. But and he it got bad enough that this guy, um, you know, I said, I said, you, you really can't be very smart if you don't see that. Well, the point is, though. He decided he yeah. wasn't going to be my friend anymore. Yeah. yeah. And I hadn't heard from him in four years. Last week, I finally got a, a little email from him. I think he's seen the light. But it, it just a lack of qualification. Forget the fact that he's well, a reprehensible person. Okay. That he has no morals. That he's a thief. That all these other things. All those aside, in the beginning, I don't know how you couldn't have known that he wasn't qualified. Well, I mean, dude, that's that's true, Dan. Was, Dan. 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 That's true. But you could make a case for the fact. That a good businessman could make a good president. But he's not a good businessman. Well, oh no, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish my thought here. That a good businessman could be president because a good businessman knows how to delegate authority. Trump does is not a good businessman, does not run a good solvent business, and does not know how to delegate authority. 
And so, therefore, he's the worst kind of businessman to make president of the United States. But, you know, if you got somebody who was open-minded and said, okay, well, I don't know anything about how you handle a pandemic, but, you know, as Dr. Fauci does, let's let him call the shots on it, and I'll simply do anything he tells me to do because I believe he has the chops. If Trump had just done that, he could have been a average president. But he didn't. He felt he was going to make all the decisions. And that anything anybody did was against him. You know, the coronavirus was invented so he couldn't get reelected. Right? Like, nobody can. We don't, we, none of us wanted this virus. But we got it, and then we needed a president who was going to react to it in a and way that we didn't even kill him when he got it, if he got it. Now, what is Charlie wearing on his... Uh, what, what oh, is this? This Biden forty states? Huh? This Biden forty states? Oh, okay. So that's your bet, right? <laughs> uh, that's what I'm going to. I'm going to go with over four hundred electoral votes. How's that? Is that good? Yeah. I mean, what would, what would make what would make Trump feel real bad? What would you I think that's what, high? What would make him go to feel go to bed that night feeling really terrible? Four hundred yeah. would definitely make him feel like shit. I, I, I would like <laughs> him to know. I would like him to go to bed that night knowing he had lost the election, and then the next morning wake up and find out he lost by more than he thought he had lost by. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to see. Well, here, here's an here's an interesting question. So let's say he loses. Mm -hmm. Good possibility. Yeah. And the shenanigans are finally over and the dust settles and he's not in the White House anymore. Yeah. Where do you think he's going to go and what do you think he's going to do? Okay. <laughs> First of all, uh, it would be nice if the answer to that one was directly to jail. But yeah. unfortunately, I don't think that's in the cards. However, uh, I think you will hear that he is going to start the Trump News Network. You know? All to compete with Fox. To compete with Fox, compete with his friends over at Newsmax. Yeah, because he, he uh, the family, has already bought into own, oh, what is it, OEN? Is it? Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, and so he'll just take that network and make it into the Trump network. But he's going to spend the rest of his life trying to get even. Well, I, no, he's going to spend the rest of the 90 days he has left getting even. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I'm worried about. Well, I think he he runs to Russia. Well, yes. you really think that he would do that? No, I don't think he's well, running yeah, to Russia. Because he's going to have so many lawsuits and and you know criminal things going off after him. He's going to just split the country. I don't think he'll see any federal charges because that's, you just it's just not and done. Tax evasion. I don't think the feds are going to pursue him at at the order of the new president. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I really don't think it'll happen. I don't agree. I think the states, like New York State, isn't going to stop. Yeah, huh? New York State's not going to stop, but uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think the feds are going to come after him. I think that it's the last thing in the world they need is to to go through that foolishness. I make a prediction. I made this prediction last night. And I'll make it again. See if you agree with me on this one, Josh. Give it four years, he will sell Trump Tower, and it may be sooner. Yeah. He's going to have to. He's going to be broke. Josh, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Anything's possible with him. I mean, that's, I said, really, I don't, I don't know that he's really going to, because he'll he, contest this to put on the show, but I don't really know that he cares because I don't really think he wants to be president. Well, he, he's, he's changed his home he's state. state. He'll Alex, make more money not being president. Alex, he's made a ton president. of money as president. I mean, he's, he's had so yeah. much. Going no, on. I, read today, I think it's like about 80 million or something like so, that. I don't think, I don't know if he's going to sell Trump Towers, but I mean, his name's on a shitload of buildings he doesn't own. He just yeah. sold the name. Yeah. And a lot of people are taking those names off those buildings because yeah. that name is. <laughs> well, I think it'd it. be a good business move at this stage. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, we had some friends who lived in a Trump apartment building here in, uh, in what was Trump City here in New York. That's that. Was that? And they Brooklyn? went to court to get the Trump name taken off the building. Because they said it hurt, because they were all, they bought it, you know, they bought their apartments. They said it was hurting the resale value. 
And and the court agreed with them, and they took the sign down. In fact, that was all a big deal on TV when they were taking this Trump, this gold Trump sign down from in front of the uh, yeah, apartment they're gonna, building. They're going to put it on Lefrak City now. They put it on Lefrak City, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it it was uh, it, you know I mean he he he, I think you're going to see him try with the, for the Trump network. I think what you're going to also see. Oh, I want here's what I want to go visit, is the Trump Library, presidential yeah. library. Uh, 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 if yeah. there ever is even a president, a Trump presidential library, I bet he's the first president in history who doesn't have one. He'll build it. He'll build it himself. But he's going to be on Mount Rushmore, so. Oh, yeah. Right. eggs and ham. Yeah. yeah. The one book that'll be in the Trump Library. Yeah. I mean, the, you can't expect. No, you can't have your cake and eat it, I mean, <clears throat> the libraries get, the libraries are actually run by the Library of Congress and the National Archives, and they're built with a lot of private money, but there is and, some. And, and what, are they, what are they built for? What is in the presidential library, Josh? Well, they pretty much all in the modern era since the archive started to do the endowment and the partnership it's mostly to house their archives mm -hmm. and they have scholarship centers so they yeah, but, have but, like but, scholars but let's go let's go back like that. let's go back to the archives okay what's in there in trumps well that would include what's that it, it would include basically I mean, it, it, it would include papers. It will include all their personal papers, yeah. uh, you know, memorandums, the personal papers. I mean, not just from them, or them personally, but like their entire administration. Anything that usually comes after that gets, de well, it's all there anyway, but, you know, that gets declassified over time, et cetera. So like, a, like the JFK dumps that you saw, I don't know, what, three, four years ago with yeah. a lot of his papers that got declassified and all of that. That was all secured by and should have been at, you know, the JFK library in Boston, for example. Yeah, but my question you know, so is, knowing Trump, how much how much stuff, memorandums and things like that do you think he actually ha has? How much Trump actual work of that much. sort? I mean, uh, uh, right. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot where Obama was concerned, a lot where Bush was concerned. I don't think there's a whole bunch of papers. The only the only thing is, did you watch did you watch sixty minutes last week when yeah. Leslie Stahl was doing the interview and after it was over, um uh, what's her name? McInerney came in with this huge yeah. book. Right? And yeah, she says, the Here's the health plan. Boom. And uh, <laughs> and and Leslie Stahl right. looked at it and found out it wasn't a health plan at all. It was just all the paperwork they had done on trying to get yeah. a health plan. And these these are the things that confuse me about Republicans because I see that, and it's this great big thing, you know, that she can barely pick up and everything. And 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 Republicans are like, see, see, you know, he's got a plan. He's got a plan. We we fucking got you there, didn't we? And then I'm thinking, yeah, but. Any other time, you guys would be like, you see that, that health care plan? It's so goddamn thick. How could anyone ever be expected to read it and know what's in there? That's a bunch of horseshit. You should need more than three or four pages to write a simple health care plan. Here we've got this fucking thing this night. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, no one said that. No one Well, said what I love about him is, is, is he said, well, we've got, on a we've got a plan. And one of the main things in our plan is everybody, every person over the age of 65, is going to get a two hundred dollar credit card for prescription medicine. Wow! Oh, a hell of a lot. When, when's, the, when's the last what time he bought prescription? Are they going to buy with that? Yeah. When, when's the last time <laughs> he bought prescription medicine and knows what it costs? For crying out loud! <laughs> you know, two hundred dollars. Thanks, Prez, and you're getting rid of everything else. <laughs> you know. By the way, I got a notice that Medicare. Uh, is going down next year. Did you did you see that? No. They're raising the age down. I got a notice from uh, from the Social Security Administration that said they expect um, the average uh, Social Security check to be up like thirty three dollars, and that the uh, there'll be some sort of a cut, and I've forgotten what the amount was oh, in Medicare premiums. A cut in the premiums. The premiums are going to go down. Oh really? I, I haven't gotten that yet. 
Yeah, I'll see it if I can find. Be, I'll see if I can find well, it. Well, then you better hope that Biden gets to be president fast and stops that one from happening. You know. Well, you don't want your Medicare premium. No, to he's talking about the premiums going down. Oh, you mean the premium is going to go down? Is that what you're saying? That's what that's yeah. what I got out of it. Oh, in other words, not the benefits, the premiums. No, not the oh, okay, then good. But Trump said he'd cut mm-hmm. benefits if he gets reelected. Dying to kill my mother. Drew. Well, it doesn't much matter what he what, says. What, what were you saying? What did you say, Tony? He's dying to kill my mom. He's not going to get her out. Yeah, well, he's di- he's dying to put you out of a job. To keep her alive, I will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he. You're voting for Biden. Spider Man. Here's the Spider Man. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Is it worth it? You do whatever you got to do with it. I don't care. Here's what it's worth. You're yeah. Well, no. Then that'd be good if it if it go, that goes down. That'd be very. Yeah, nice. That would be good. You know, I just want to. I want to see with Medicare. Uh, we'll get to Medicare for all eventually, hopefully, but right now with Medicare. <laughs> background picture. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I like it. Um, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I forgot completely sorry, sorry, sorry. now. Watch Netflix later if you want, Ray. Uh, I forgot <laughs> what I was going to say now. I had the whole... Shit, sorry, Alex. Oh, Stay up all night and watch your TV. <laughs> That really put me off there. Anyway... I'm uh, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, God, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> I just think that uh, that uh, you know we, we we've got it. We, we've got he's we've he's we've got to get him out of there. He's just I hope you're right. He's out. just I dangerous really for America. He's dangerous for the Republicans. You know he's ru- so ruined and sullied their brand. And you can watch if he loses, how many of those Republicans are going to be running for the doors? I mean, just they, all of a sudden they're going to be like uh, like Judas. They're going to be denying him three times. You know. Uh, I never knew the guy. I I just basically was on his side because they'd want to mad at me. They're going to have every lame excuse for, in in the book. Those Republican senators who are left, um, because I think we're going to take the Senate too. And if we take the Senate, we got the Congress and we got the White House. Then I think they can just start passing bills like there was no tomorrow, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, and and turn a lot of this around really fast. Oh, there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you what you're voting for here. The cutest child on earth. The cutest child on earth. Look at See, that. She needs wow. to have a future in this country, and she needs to grow up in a country that's, yes, it's, you're right, 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 Adrian? Right. Are you voting for Biden, Adrian? Go ahead, <laughs> move her head, move her head, move her head. <laughs> Say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what do you think of Trump? Stick your tongue out. <laughs> oh man. I, I looked up what I what I got was was not from the Social Security Administration. It was from uh, AARP. Oh, okay. And what they said was the, I misconstrued it because I just glanced at it. That there will be a 1.3 percent cola in Social Security next year. <clears throat> And that was going to be uh, wiped out by increases in Medicare, yeah. but they passed some legislation that's cranking that back. So you should actually realize the 1.3%. Oh, okay. So it's not a reduction. Okay. It's a reduction well, in the increase. It's a reduction in the increase. A reduction in the in- increase. Oh, okay. All right. That's cool. the, Lincoln, the Lincoln Project has a good video out where they have the, the mom and the, the boy says, who are you voting for? And he says, she says, I'm voting for you. Yeah, he Lincoln says, Project from. He says, but I'm not running. She says, but I'm voting for you. Yeah, but you're voting for you. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. You, it, this is what you're voting for a kid with her tongue out and her. <laughs> that's always the go to face kids do, you know? I mean, that's, that's it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. You, you know, your face is going to stay that way. Your face is going to stay that way. <laughs> oh, God. Jack uh, Bishop's going to say, why can't he get on? Then he's going to flash over here and see this. There are times when I hear a crying baby in a movie theater that I'm glad I didn't have any kids. And then there are times when I see a kid like this and I go, I really should have had one. Um <laughs> Can Tomorrow. I borrow her for a couple of years or something? Just uh, yeah, no return back. <laughs> Thank you, no Jeff. Return. Thank you, Josh. 
uh, thank you, Adrian, and your whoever's with that guy with you. Uh, thank you, Charlie, uh, Dan. Thank you. Call us more, Dan. You're terrific. You're oh, thank you just so much. Very good on this panel. So please call call us back, okay? I will do. And uh, uh, fucking shingles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> John Larkin, thank you. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, uh, uh, Ray. Good to see you, Ray. Hey, always, yeah. Always good to see you. Thank uh, you. Everybody get your shingle shot. to be shot. here. Yeah, get your shingle shot. Get a single shingle shot. And uh, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, here we go. There we go. And uh, let me get rid of them all. Uh, unceremoniously dump them. Um, anyway, that's it for our our panel for tonight. Uh, stay tuned for the intersection, which is next with Jack Bishop. Uh, he will be here on, and taking your calls on a little thing called Skype, and Gabnet Live is the address on that one. Uh, we'll be back again on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yep, election night. Okay, and we'll sit around here and we'll watch the uh, uh, the results coming in and and. Uh, discuss it all and then hopefully our long national nightmare will be over and if it's not well we'll just do a show the next night and continue with the national nightmare in the meantime we'll see you then same time same station in life 10 30 eastern daylight time in the meantime if you see her tell her i love her and by the way be safe out there and do the most important thing of all wear a mask good night everybody and don't forget to vote <laughs>